Hello everyone. This is a quick overview video for the space plane that I built for Kerbal Space Program version 1.2.2. I wanted something that was a, a vertical takeoff and landing type design which was also capable of a single stage to orbit operation and this is the design I came up with. It's a little bit different. Uh, I'll go over the basics here. The uh, craft is fully stocked with the exception of the two rototrons here which are from the Infernal Robotics mod. It's a great little mod, uh, and unfortunately, Squad still has not put a comparable part into the game, so I could not make this fully stock. There is a fully stocked version of this craft that I have online as well, but it's just really cumbersome to try to fly it because you have to have a probe core attached to the moving part, and it's just too much of a workload for the pilot. Uh, there's also mech jib here, which is not on the craft that I've uploaded to Kerbal X. It's just here for the... Uh, for debugging purposes as I uh, try to get the aerodynamic drag reduced. Um, the link for the Kerbal X download is going to be in the description as well. I'll go ahead and go over the uh, the flight operation here in case anyone wants to download this and take a shot at trying to get it into orbit and back. Uh, what you're going to want to do first is choose your control point. Uh, you can right click on the cockpit if you have a crew, which we'll choose control from here. Otherwise there's a probe or a a drone core here that you can uh, select if you're not flying with a crew and there is a probe core in the back here as well which is used during re-entry uh, it's uh, tilted at, a, at 30 degrees so what you do is you just control from this point and then uh, select your prograde vector with SAS and it will keep the nose uh, 30 degrees above prograde which will increase your drag and uh, help with cooling during the re-entry process so the first things you're going to want to do is go ahead and enable RCS and SAS. Um, also, uh, the act the, I'll go over the action keys here. Action group one will fire the two rockets or the two jets uh, on the rotating pods here. Uh, action group two will fire the rockets. They're, the action keys are mostly in order that you're going to be uh, pressing them in. Um, action group three will move the uh, engine pods to their to their next presets. Um, the first one will be a uh, um, sort of a halfway point um, between the upright and the uh, forward position, and the third time you, or the second time you hit it, it'll be fully forward. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is uh, go ahead and uh, hit action group one and increase your throttle and allow the jet engines to uh, to come up to full speed. It should not take off if you're fully loaded on fuel. What you're going to want to do next is fire the rockets, and then about a half second later, hit, uh, hit action group three to swivel the pods forward to the first position. The nose will rise uh, shortly thereafter, and once it hits its maximum vertical position, hit action group three a second time to move the pods forward. I'll go ahead and do that. So, action group two, three, wait for the nose to rise, and then once it maxes out, hit three again, then hit action group Four to fire the inboard engines. Uh, action group two to turn off the rockets to save your oxidizer and then bring your gear up. And then turn off RCS. I actually took off without RCS, it doesn't really matter. But sometimes it helps with stability. And what you're going to want to do is uh, kind of keep an eye on your speed. You want to do it in an initial climb at about 35 degrees or so, 30 to 35. So just hit the F key uh, to drop your uh, prograde vector, or drop your nose towards the prograde. And you should notice that you're, uh, you're accelerating slowly. What you're going to want to shoot for is about 10,000 meters. Uh, at 10,000 meters you want the nose to be about uh, 10 to 15 degrees above the horizon. Um, usually like right about 12 degrees is best. While we're accelerating uh, to that point, I'll go ahead and uh, also mention that there are parachutes on the top here. This craft has to be landed vertically. There's no rolling gears on it. Um, there are ladders here that you can use if you want to get out and crawl across the top of the wing to repack the chutes. You can also crawl down the back and there's ladders in the very back on the tail, which is the lowest point of the spacecraft. Uh, you can use those to get down to the ground if you want to after landing. 
So now that we're at 10,000 uh, meters, uh, go ahead and uh, drop the nose down to about uh, uh, 10 to 15 percent, or 10 to 15 degrees. And then we're just going to hold it there until the spacecraft stops accelerating. And these jet engines, once you hit about Mach 1. Uh, 1.8 or so, they go into sort of a feedback loop and they start to build thrust and the craft will start accelerating pretty quickly. Usually it will max out at around 1,000 to sometimes 1,100 meters per second. So once you get to the point where the craft is no longer accelerating, you're going to want to hit action group 2 to fire the rockets. And also hit RCS, uh, since you're going to be leaving the atmosphere shortly, you want to give the craft a little bit of ability, a little bit, a little bit more ability to control itself. So I'll go ahead and enable RCS right now. And now that we stopped accelerating, I'll go ahead and fire the rockets. At this point, it's going to more or less be completely engulfed in plasma. Um, some parts might start to get a little hot. You might see overheat bars on the RCS uh, pods, but it shouldn't be anything to uh, cause concern. Keep an eye on your apoapsis when you get it to above uh, around 75 or so uh, kilometers, go ahead and throttle back on the engines. And I stopped at a set about 80. And you saw that my nose was about 20 degrees over, uh, over the horizon. I wasn't watching that. You want to keep it around 15. And once you've uh, stopped your burn, just go ahead and uh, and uh, lock the prograde vector so you reduce your drag. And I'm going to use MechJib here real quick to see what kind of delta V I have left over. Looks like I've got about 582 left. So while we're coasting out of the atmosphere, I will go ahead and just set a maneuver node here to get an idea of what kind of delta V we need to circularize the orbit. Looks like I'm going to need about 395 or so. Call it 400. I'll go ahead and time warp. And another issue with the Infernal Robotics mod is these ro rototrons are useful parts, but they just, they're not very stable. They, they're they lightweight parts. They only weigh about, a, I think, about 0.1 tons. And the way Kerbal Space Program determines if a part's going to be wobbly or, enough, or not is it compares its mass to the mass of what it's connected to. And if it's pretty low, like it is in this case, there's a little bit of a uh, wobble if the part's not very stiff and it's very hard to reinforce it with struts here because of the way these are designed. So uh, the side effect of that, the reason why I bring that up is when you fire these rockets, uh, it might wobble around, uh, around quite a bit once you get low on fuel, so just be mindful of that. Uh, once we get close to the burn point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire the rockets. You can see there's a little bit of oscillation that's induced because of the part being wobbly. If it gets a little bit squirrely, just back off on the on the throttle. I'm gonna go ahead and check the map here and find out where we are. I let that get a little bit out of hand. I just wanted to demonstrate what happens if you. Uh, if you try to burn for extended periods of time and that 
uh, with these rockets. I'm going to attempt to uh, make some changes to the model to, to correct that, but for the time being, if you just keep the throttle relatively low, it's uh, a little bit better behaved. And then we are in orbit. And we have... We still have 175 uh, delta V left, 175 meters per second delta V, and also uh, have our monopropellant as well, which you probably want to uh, say, turn off your RCS to, to uh, preserve that and just use the uh, reaction wheels. So that's pretty much the uh, operation of this craft to get it into orbit. To uh, do orbiting, it's pretty straightforward. Again, just you know, right click on this. Uh, Point here once you get into the atmosphere control from there and hold your prograde vector uh, and once you slow down to a safe point be sure to switch back to uh, one of these two points here to uh, to uh, resume control of the craft all right thanks for watching if I hope everyone enjoys this uh, look forward to uh, making some changes to it as well and keeping the craft file on uh, Kerbal X up to date thanks for watching